well regulated militia be necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Welcome to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards. I am so glad you're with us on the program today. We've got some good news to report. It's always nice to uh, start off the workday with some uh, good news. Big decision out of the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, uh, keeping an injunction in place, for the most part, against the uh, ATF's frame and receiver rules. The uh, challenged portion of those rules are on hold, according to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, which is very, very good news. Also, some good news out of Massachusetts, as we reported at uh, Bearing Arms earlier today, HD 4420 will not be rushed through the uh, legislature before they break for their August recess. The pushback that lawmakers are receiving from gun owners, as well as uh, police chiefs, and now even some uh, some mayors uh, in Massachusetts is really having an impact. So uh, congratulations to gun owners. Now, this doesn't mean that the bill is dead in the water, but it does mean that uh, lawmakers are not comfortable and confident that they have the votes to pass it right now. So keep up the pressure there in Massachusetts. We'll be talking with Jim Wallace of the Gun Owners Action League uh, at some point in the next couple of days about the uh, latest on HD 4420. Today, however, we're going to be talking with our friend Rick Hector, firearms instructor in Detroit. Uh, He has a a huge event coming up, and I do mean huge. We're uh, hoping to train more than a thousand people in the basics of gun safety. We're going to get to that in just one moment. Before we do, however, you know, Biden's America doing his best to crush us. You've got companies laying off tens of thousands of workers, one after the other. Americans working two jobs just to get by. Inflation, pushing hardworking families to the brink. Just look at the price of lunch meat. And a digital dollar could be coming out of the pipeline to completely destroy our way of life. The truth is, you need a plan. You know it, and I know it. And that's why you should call Gold Co. So you can diversify your savings and investments with gold and silver before things get worse. They're an Inc. 5000, six-time Inc. 5000 winner, 2022 Company of the Year, with thousands of five-star reviews. And they've helped people like you and me place over $1 billion in gold and silver. They're offering up to $10,000 in free silver while supplies last. And if you call them today... Qualified callers will get a free Ronald Reagan half-ounce silver coin. So don't wait. Call Gold Co. at 855-412-3806 today. That's 855-412-3806. All right, so let's pick up our conversation with my friend Rick Ector, a firearms instructor in the Detroit area, legally armed in Detroit, at Detroit CCW on the social media. And, you know, for several years now, uh, Rick has been putting together this event on a yearly basis. Where, uh, you know, training, I think it started out with like 500 and it just kept on growing uh, individuals over the course of a weekend. Again, in the basics of gun safety and you'll get new gun owners, you get people who are thinking about becoming a gun owner. Uh, it's really a magnificent event and I am happy to help spread the word about it. So uh, let's get to our conversation with Rick Hector. Take a look and a listen. Rick Hector, it's so good to see you, my friend. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. Hey, man, it's always a pleasure to see you and to be on the show, man. Glad to be here and uh, glad to talk with you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so so how many years is, is this? Is this 10 or 11 for, for your massive gun training event? This is actually the 12th. Oh, I don't know why I'm always a year two, off. I'm two. always a year behind for some reason. The 12th <laughs> go around. <laughs> Holy man, moly. I, I don't know, man. And maybe you, you're thinking that we that it was 12 years, but some people are thinking, well, hey, maybe he took COVID off. No, nah, man, we did COVID. We did it uh 2020, man. And uh, as a matter of fact, it was the biggest year ever. Really? Well, you know, listen, I mean, 2020, that was a, I, I talk about the great gun run of 2020. That was obviously when we had a lot of uh, new gun owners. So it makes sense. A lot of folks were uh, out there wanting to get some training, but but let, let's talk about this year's events. So this is the twelfth go around. Do you have an official name for this? No, I do not. <laughs> Twelve <laughs> years and we haven't come up with a name for it. <laughs> I mean, if if you know what, when you first do something, I guess that's the time to do it. Like come up with a name, and everything I come up with is goofy because I have this affinity for acronyms. You know, like I have to make it like relevant to what it is and make it a word. And you know what? We've been running it. This will be 12 years without an official acronym name. Why start now, man? Well, there you go. All right. Well, I, you know, as a, uh, as a Gen X guy, I'll, I'll call it training Palooza uh, for the course of this interview. here. Um, and so, so, so when is this year's event? 
It is this upcoming weekend on uh, this upcoming Saturday and Sunday, which would be July 29th and 30th. Okay. Be, Taylor, uh, Michigan? Taylor, Michigan, just right outside of Detroit at two gun ranges simultaneously uh, for two days. We're talking about the, the gun range formerly known as Top Gun Shooting Sports. I can't force myself to remember the new name just yet. And I think I checked their website and they're still branded as Top Gun Shooting Sports, but technically it's not Top Gun, but it's Top Gun Shooting Sports and uh, Recoil Firearms, both in Taylor, Taylor, Michigan. Okay. Um, and, and obviously if you guys are doing this, you know, two ranges at the same time, you're hoping for what, 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 what kind of turnout are you hoping for this year? Man, you know, and that's a really interesting question. You know, uh, always you want to go onwards and upwards, man. But, uh, you know, and I did set a goal. I set a goal of 1500. Okay. And I'm really pulling out all the stops to make that happen. Although it's come to my attention, man, my visibility on uh, Facebook has been uh, diminished. I think I'm so-called shadow banned. So, oh. I'm pulling, so I'm pulling out all the stops to uh, mitigate and work around it. Uh, fortunately, I've had some media uh, exposure uh, locally. I was on the Fox 2 affiliate here. Uh, I had a segment there and I had a a segment on the local CBS affiliate. I had a segment there. A uh, couple of uh, local radio programs. I was on uh, Michigan News Source. I was on uh, the Ski Steve Gruber show. Uh, Ammo Land put out an article for me. So I'm in the process of trying to mitigate all of that. But uh, it's obvious my Facebook presence has been diminished. People are like, Hey, are you still active? Hey, are you still doing it? And I'm like, okay, I just have to knuckle down and uh, do what's required, man. That's, and that's right. I, and if it means I need to send out a thousand blind emails to media <laughs> PR people, I'm up to the task, man. So that's that's <laughs> what I'm doing. I'm working twice as hard and and hopefully I'll, I'll get the desired result man but uh, it just forced upon me that uh merely uh behaving online to stay in the good graces of big brother so you can't really say how you feel about little uh, other things that are truly important to you that you really have to be the source of your own attention and not yeah. be relying on the gatekeepers you know, it's not like uh, I act so badly online that I need to be police, man, but uh, I need to control my own media. And and that's one thing that I truly I can admire about you, man. You have your own platform that's well established and you're a known quantity. People know about you. And when you put something out, everyone listens. If you're old enough, it's to remember, it's kind of like the E.F. Hutton. You're the E.F. Hutton of guns. You know, <laughs> see, you must be as old as I am, right? Uh, well, I, yeah, I don't remember you know, E.F. Hutton anyway. Man, you're making my now. See, I don't know my my hat's fitting tighter. I don't know why. It's like my head is swelling as we're talking uh, here today. But we're not, we're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about you, and we're here to talk about and not just you, Rick. But we're here to talk about. The folks who are going to be showing up this weekend, uh, both those who are interested in training as well as the the wonderful team of volunteers that you've got, because you can't do this. There's a way you can instruct 1,500 people, right? So you've got a, a a team of volunteers who are going to be out there. And is this is this still uh, women only? Is this a women only event? It's still a, a women's only event in terms of attendees. Okay. And, you know, every now and then I get a little pushback on that. And uh, when I explain to people how this event came to be, how I was uh, motivated to create this event, you know, it goes back to 12 years ago. I was watching our local uh, TV news uh, stations put out the news report, and I saw what I felt was a very – you know, disturbing story. It was a, a woman whose uh, body was found in the street, uh, partially disclosed. They obviously, had been assaulted and murdered. And so that stayed on my heart for a minute, man. And uh, I talked with a few fellow firearms trainers. And, and why is it 
that real gun rights advocates only have friends that are gun rights advocates, man. Cause <laughs> I don't have too many people in my circle that are not like gun owners and firearms instructors and gun rights advocates. But, but anyway, I uh, got with my, my small network of fellow trainers and uh, I shared my vision that uh, let's do a free shooting event for women. Let's remove all the typical barriers like uh, range time, having to pay money to shoot, you know, a target, access to a gun, ammunition, you know, competent instruction. You know, let's just remove everything. The only thing that, that we can't do is uh, get you a babysitter if necessary and provide free transportation. Other than that, we have it all covered. And, you know, I was talking to our mutual friend, uh, Ken Blanchard, and I was sharing with him my vision. And he was pushing me to go forward, man. And uh, I got 50 people uh, to show up that first iteration. And, you know, as I was sharing the results, everyone was like, oh, man, you got 50 people, you know, hooray. And they were like giving me the virtual pat on the back. Man, I, I was uh, I, I was I was in the doldrums, man. I was very disappointed, man. I was expecting hundreds, you know, dare I say in my ignorance, maybe even a thousand. I thought, hey. Who, who wouldn't take me up on this, right? But uh, I, I'm in a way, you know, I was unrealistic. 50 is outstanding for a first go run. I just had unrealistic expectations. And uh, as I've done this event year after year, man, and it grows, it, it becomes so much more than a shooting event at a gun range. It becomes a, an exercise in project management. You know, it's like... <laughs> Putting on, it's like literally putting on a conference, man. You got facilities, equipment, tools, training, uh, people, networking. You know, it it's a it's a big deal to put this thing on, and uh, it is sufficiently complex and in depth. But uh, I'm here to tell people, I just make it look easy. Well, you you do make it look easy, but you're right, man. I mean, you're juggling all kinds of. Uh, it, this is like putting on a conference, uh, and, and you know, and the fact that that you're doing this year after year, you've got these volunteer instructors that are showing up. You know, again, I think it speaks to the importance of uh, not only exercising our Second Amendment rights, but again, having that education and training. You know, and you and I have talked about this before. I don't think either one of us are big fans of mandates where the state says you've got to go through, you know, umpteen hours of training before you can exercise your Second Amendment rights. That doesn't mean that we don't believe that training and education is invaluable. And, and so, you know, giving people the tools that they need so that they can be safe and competent uh, handling a fire. I mean, hopefully, again, this is the first step, right? This isn't this isn't going to turn them into an expert marksman, oh, no, 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 but no, this, this is their introduction. And then hopefully they'll only- carry forward. Not only is it an introduction, man, you know, for those who, you know, lack the, the the opportunity, shall I say, to go to a gun range and feel comfortable with uh, that whole environment. And, you know, it, it doesn't even matter if you're a woman. I mean, you could be a guy first time, never touched a gun. And, you know, you could be rather intimidated. You know, the ego could get in the way. There's some things that you know that you don't know, but, you know, you're aware of things that you don't know. And, uh, and, you know, some guys, you know, we have egos. You know, I know I do, man. And I probably would be reluctant to ask. I mean, I still remember my first foray into a gun range after I got robbed in my driveway about uh, 17 years ago, man. But I consciously put my ego on the shelf and said, hey, brand new at this thing. Show me what to do. Gave me the bare minimum. And I, I survived without you know, hurting myself or damaging the property. And I'm so thankful for that, man. But, uh, you know, it, it's it's a major miracle that this thing happens. And of course, I couldn't do it without everyone. And uh, really, I, I, want, I have to really single out my ammo supplier this year. They came through, just threw a ton of ammo at me. Um, gun group here in the state of Michigan, Michigan Coalition of Responsible Gun Owners. But, uh, you know, I told him, hey, every time I go somewhere and talk to somebody, I'm going to say, hey, out of all the people that that put this on, man, if without any ammo, I couldn't do a doggone thing. But, yeah, I can say that about everybody else. The two gun ranges, Top Gun Shooting Sports, uh, Recoil Firearms, all the instructors. I mean, you know, 
it, it's a it's a major miracle this thing actually happens because <laughs> there's multiple points of failure, but uh, you know you just got to somehow make it all happen. And you and you somehow managed to pull it all together. Now now who who is your ammo sponsor? I don't think you said their name. Uh the Gun Food is the sponsor for the ammo. They uh, were the supplier, and uh, the purchase of their ammunition from the Gun Food was by. The Michigan Coalition of Responsible Gun Owners. They supplied the funds for me to get it from this group, this organization. Uh, I used them uh, on a limited basis the prior year, and their delivery and quality was outstanding. Had some issues with ammo quality before, and, you know, that's the last thing you want to fool around with. Yeah, absolutely. When you're talking about shooting, man, you know, all sorts of things can uh can occur and uh one particular brand of ammo i had had a lot of uh misfires you know and uh those aren't so bad because you know there could be the dreaded hang fire you know and we don't want that either but uh but you know they, they did a good job and i'm happy to report that uh that their delivery is great he's going to actually uh walk it down from uh from uh georgia as opposed to all these things we're hearing about potential strikes with 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 uh, transportation carriers now. Yeah, you know I, I try to keep myself out of the popular news because I have a single <laughs> focus. Right? My single focus is conducting this event, publicizing it, being on Cameron Company with you, sir. Man, I you know what? At one point, I was trying to count how many times I've been fortunate for you to have me on the show, man. And I gave up like around 75, you know, and I was, you know, and I'm sure I'm over 100 now. I just haven't, uh, you know, been counting them and documenting them since, you know, you started this show. Well, I was going to say, next time we have you on, let's just let's just uh, assume it's like uh, your 150th visit. And it's, it's definitely over 100. And I'll see know, if I can get you know some uh, some like streamers and you know food and little noisemakers, and we'll have a we'll have a little party. Hey, listen, b- b- before we run out of time here, I want to let folks know: is it too late for them to sign up? I mean, if folks are if there are women who are watching in the Detroit area and they're like, "Hey, I want to take part in this," or I know. You know, my sister, or my coworker, my cousin would benefit from this because you need to have a head count. Yes, ahead of time. I, you can't just you can't just show up on open, Saturday. Still open. I still want more women to sign to sign up for the event. Ages uh, twelve to ninety. Uh, bring them on out. If there are men watching this program, certainly, fellas, you have wives, you have significant others. You have sisters, you have mothers, you have aunts, you have daughters, you have nieces. And even if you're just the true loner and don't know anyone, you're on social media for a sense of community with people at large. Repost this episode of Cam and Company, draw attention to it, put it on your links, on your social platform of choice, and let women know that we're looking for them. We're going to train them. We're going to keep them safe. We're going to educate them and give them some tools that they will find permanently forever useful. All right. So how do they sign up? Once they get the message, once they get the info, how do they sign up? I'm not, I'm not taking them over to that social networking site. Go to my blog, legally armed in Detroit.com legally armed in Detroit.com. Com. There's links. Sign up. You, it could be uh, one session. You know, sign up on Saturday or Sunday. You even get the pick between of the two ranges, which one you want to go to. I mean, Taylor isn't that big of a city, but the ranges are on opposite ends of the town. Find a day, find a range, uh, and find the time. I have them all spaced out throughout the day: nine to eleven, eleven to one. One to three, you get it all the way throughout the day. I'm certain you can find one that best fits your schedule. We take care of everything. Free gun, free free uh, tutoring, free targets, ammunition, ear protection, eye protection. All you have to do is register at LegallyArmedInDetroit.com and arrive at your appointed time, and we'll take care of the rest. All right, listen, I got to ask you one more question. So I got a little fly in here uh, bugging me. Uh, you know, over the course of these 12 years, do you see, do you have people who show up year after year? Or, you know, have you been able to to keep track of 
some of the, have, the folks that you've trained? I, have, I mean, what I kind of impact one, does this have? I have rosters of, of people who attend, you know, but I don't go through and see, okay, who's been every year. But anecdotally, just talking to people, you know, many of them show up for a year or two, take a year or two off, you know, something happened, but then they come back another year and then magically they bring people with them. And and, and it just grows organically. And I really love that feel. You know, the one thing that I've been fortunate to do relatively early on is to collect the email addresses. And that kind of, you know, just happened the way I, I accept registration through email. I tell folks, look, I don't want to be obtrusive like the census. All I need is your name and your email address. And then this little program, you know, sends them a copy and sends me an email. And I even got fancy, man. I went out and researched uh, email utility that will go through your inbox online at your uh, like Gmail provider or Ymail, whatever you have, give it a key and it will segment all those emails and go in and extract information out of those emails and put it into a database and a spreadsheet. And then you can upload it into a email management thing. And you know what? It's really neat. And I'm really glad that I uh, took the time to figure out how to do it because it's uh, unduly complicated. Because <laughs> could you imagine the alternative going through a thousand emails, opening each one of them and highlight and copying each email address? Right. Can you imagine how arduous that would you be? You don't have time for that. You got to deal with all this other stuff that comes together with putting this uh, this program on, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad to know that you're... Uh, you're using tech to assist you. And again, legally armed in Detroit.com. If you want to sign up, this is, again, it's an incredible event run by incredible people. Uh, and, and Rick Ector is at the heart of this, you know, training hundreds, thousands of women over the years. Um, and, and as you say, Rick, I mean, this, you know, this came about because you saw uh, an absolute tragedy uh, and you want to prevent those tragedies from taking place. You want to ensure that people do have the ability to protect and defend themselves. And, and thank God that you're doing that, man. Cause I think you're having man, a real impact, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so very much. But uh, like I said, it's so many more people out there that contribute in so many different ways. You know, I count all the way up until now is roughly 7,500. I would love to make it to 9,000, you know, another 1,500. I have my challenges right now in getting the word out due to some what well, suppression issues. But you know what? If, if, if they are truly suppressing me like I believe they are, I mean, you can go to my page and find me. But if I post anything or or say anything on my page, only people who just go to my page will see it. So, yeah. You know, I'm, well, listen, I'm, dude, we we can't fight uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, and social media. I mean, that is a whole other issue unto itself. But, uh, you know, you've got a lot of friends in the 2A community who are going to help you get the word out. Uh, and again, I, I hope that you have an incredibly successful event this weekend. Can we check back in with you uh, next week? Get an update after man, action report. I, I would, look, I would love to add just a one, just one more event. Push me over, <laughs> man. It has to be at least a thousand, man. No, for real, at least. You know, let's see. No, not a thousand, but I'm, I'm definitely have to be at least over a hundred. Over a okay. hundred. You know, I still remember that time I met you and Pop at that one conference, man. And uh, what was that? St. Louis that year? What was wait? Yeah, I remember it was down in – no, it was uh, – was it Carolina? Charlotte? North, Carolina, North yeah. Carolina, I believe it was. I think you're right. I think you're right. I got to say, man, all those all those annual meetings blend together. All I know is that I've known you for a long, long time, and I've been a fan of yours for a long, long time. So anytime I get the opportunity to spend some time with you, uh, I, I, I consider that to be a good day. So I am glad that we got a chance to hang out today. We will have you back next week because I do want to uh, get that after action report. But I got to tell you, man, I, and I, I, you know, Rick, you, 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 you sometimes after this event is done, I know sometimes you feel like a letdown, like, oh, man, I wish we had 2000 people. I ah. wish we had 1800 people. I'm telling you right now, do not do not have that attitude because every person that walks through the door of that range on Saturday or Sunday. Every person who gets that training education is a life that you 
and your colleagues are changing for the better. So, yeah. you know, we hear all the time for the gun control groups when they have like a gun buyback. Well, if we just get one gun off the street, you know, that makes a difference. I don't think that's the case. But I do think it's the case that every person who walks through the door and gets that education, you are providing a tangible benefit in their lives. Uh, and so the work that you and your colleagues are doing this weekend, it is life saving. It is vitally important. Uh, and again, I, I, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate what you're doing with this. Thank you, sir. And hey, I am so glad that you allowed me to be on again. again. Always. Always. Man, you got, so a, you got a microphone I'm whenever so, you need it. I'm so you glad it. you haven't overdosed on me and still invite me back, man. It'll, Not at all. Not at all. But I want to make it my mission. We're going to come up with a name for this thing for next year, for the 13th <laughs> annual. It's going to have yeah, an actual honest year, to goodness next name. Year when you show up in person <laughs> with the name on a big giant sign, right? There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, nah, man, but I kid you a lot about making it down. I know you got uh, some, some things going on, man, and uh, I wish you and your family the best. But I'm not, I'm going to tell you, I would be remiss if I didn't say it would be so awesome to have you in the house, man. Listen, I, I and I've told you this before, and I'm, I'm serious. Um, the next time that I can get out and travel, uh, Detroit is my number one destination. Unfortunately, as you say, you know, we've got some health concerns with my wife, so it's kind of hard for me to get out and about for more than about four hours at a time. So I had to miss NRA this year. I'm having a miss gun rights policy conference. I'm going to be attending virtually, but, um, you know, once we get in a position where I can travel again, buddy, I'm heading in your direction. All right. <laughs> All right, man. Look, I I'm so honored and thankful to yet again, be on the show. I appreciate you. And you know what? I love you and thank you, man. I, well, I, your friendship means a lot to me. And thank you for having me on the show. I love you right back, Rick Hector. And uh, again, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And we'll be talking again here very soon. Legally armed in Detroit.com. Spread the word. Let's let everybody in the Detroit, Michigan area know that there is this free firearms instruction going on this weekend. Uh, for all females in the area, again, legally armed in Detroit.com. That's where you want to send folks. Uh, Rick Hector, thank you again for joining us today. Thanks for all you do. And we'll see you back here for uh, appearance 150 next week. <laughs> all right, man. 150. Woo -hoo! <laughs> well, thank you again to Rick for joining us on the program. Best of luck to uh, him and all of his volunteers for this uh, amazing event. We'll uh, try to get an after action report from Rick here before long as well. Right now, let's turn our attention to today's armed citizen story. Our good deed of the day. And our recidivist report will start there. St. Paul in Minnesota, where, you know, lawmakers uh, could have uh, gotten tough on violent crime and instead decided to get tough on law-abiding gun owners this year. Yes, this omnibus public safety bill that was passed does include more money for police. It includes more money for courts. Um, but it also includes a lot of new infringements on the right to keep and bear arms, including a, a pistol purchase permit requirement, a, a red flag law and a host of other provisions that, again, are not aimed at violent criminals, but are aimed at you and me. Meanwhile, we're still seeing headlines like this. St. Paul man gets probation for shooting at ex-girlfriend's Lakeville home and fleeing police. Yeah, probation for that. That seems like a pretty serious crime, doesn't it? 21-year-old Noah Pierre Murph pleaded guilty to drive-by shooting towards an occupied building as well as fleeing police in a motor vehicle in connection with the incident that happened last year which was sparked by what he believed was his lack of parenting time with his eight-month-old son. Not, by the way, how you handle a parenting dispute uh, by driving to your ex's house and then firing shots. A charge of second-degree assault with a deadly weapon was dismissed as part of the plea agreement that Murph reached with Dakota County prosecutors. Now, Murph had no previous felony convictions, but he did, place, uh, he did face a, a presumptive sentence of four years in prison under state sentencing guidelines, Prosecution agreed to cap its request at 41 months as part of the plea deal. Murph's attorney uh, asked Dakota County District Judge Jamie Cork for a departure from the sentencing guidelines, saying that his client's remorseful and ashamed of what he did. Uh, the attorney, uh, John Arachigo, said that Murph is amenable to probation. Well, of course he is. He's facing, you know, three, well, almost four years in prison, noting that he had followed conditions of his release from jail on April the 8th. So that's, I mean, that's great. He's abided by the terms of his, you know, uh, well, he's abided by the law for a couple of months, which is a good sign. And hopefully, hopefully the court doesn't hear anything more from Mr. Murph.
because the judge did grant that departure, stayed a four-year prison term for five years, during which time Murph will serve supervised probation. Uh, in the departure report, the judge noted that Murph is, quote, particularly amenable to both probation and chemical dependency treatment, uh, and that the victim or victims are in agreement. I, 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 boy, again, there's not a true recidivist report. Again, I know that Mr. Murph doesn't have any previous criminal history, but anytime I see shots fired resulting in probation, while we've got people who are trying to send you and me to prison for possessing a magazine that they think is too big or a gun that's too black and scary, uh, it rubs me the wrong way. So, yes, I'm going to go ahead and throw Mr. Murph in, and hopefully he does not ever appear in our recidivist report ever again because that would mean that he is, in fact, a true recidivist. Uh, on to today's armed citizen story from Birmingham, Alabama, where police say that the fatal shooting of a 44-year-old uh, earlier this year was a justified use of force. No criminal charges will be filed. This happened back in May. Birmingham police received a call, a 911 call around 1145 on a Friday night about a person with a gun. A second call then came in that a person had been shot at that same location. Officers arrived and they found uh, a 44-year-old man uh, passed away at the scene. Uh, at the time, uh, Officer uh, Truman Fitzgerald with the Birmingham Police Department said the preliminary investigation indicated that the unidentified suspect was walking in the neighborhood, had a firearm on them. The victim exited a residence and made contact with the armed man, and that is when the uh, 44-year-old was shot. According to police, it appears the two men knew each other. The shooting was not random. Uh, AL.com reports that the man who fired the fatal shots was interviewed and booked into the Birmingham County Jail, or Birmingham City Jail, rather, on a 48-hour felony hold and was then released. Now, again, this was back in May. Uh, last Friday, the Jefferson County DA's office determined that no criminal charges would be filed, and uh, the suspect in this case, as it turns out, the victim, who was able to protect and defend their life, thanks to the fact that they had a firearm. Don't have a lot of details, again, about uh, what led to the shooting of uh, Adrian Christian, the uh, 44-year-old. Uh, but again, we do know that the uh, person who fired those shots now, according to the district attorney, was acting in self-defense. And again, no criminal case will be moving forward. Finally today, our good deed of the day in the right place at the right time. Wasn't able to do the right thing. A uh, police officer in Hapeville, Georgia, who absolutely made a, a young kid's day, surprising him with a PlayStation. <laughs> this is a uh, screen capture. Looks like from the uh, dash cam, uh, or at least a uh, passerby, Officer Colloran uh, was dispatched to a neighborhood in uh, Hapeville because there was somebody who wanted a kid removed from the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. I, that, that Again, talk about rubbing me the wrong way. Get this kid out of here. Off my lawn. So Colloran shows up. He met with the kid, and he found out that the kid was just looking to do some yard work. So he was going door to door and, you know, hey, do you need your lawn mowed? Do you need any, you know, weeds pulled? Whatever. He was trying to save up money for a PlayStation. And again, had the police called on him. The Hayville Police Department wrote on Facebook, the young man was polite, respectful, truthful. Officer Collar and a gamer himself was impressed with the young man and thought that he would help him reach his goal. So when Collar went back to the station, he started talking with some of his colleagues. They pulled their money together. And not only bought the kid a PlayStation, but also bought a gift card to pay for an online membership so that he can download some games and play right away. Um, in the video that the department shared, the uh, child obviously shocked, thrilled, gave Officer Colloran a big hug. The department said Officer Colloran made sure that this young man knew that they would play on the same team online soon. So again, in the right place. At the right time, willing able to do the right thing in uh, Hateful, Georgia, Officer Colloran. And uh, to whoever that nudgenik was who called the police and a kid, you know, looking to do some chores, man, get a life. I, 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 I hope that they saw this story and then, well, yeah, I feel like a schmuck. Yeah, you should. Anyway, all's well that ends well. And uh, in this case, a happy ending to a story and uh, hopefully the kid was able to get some uh, some yard work out of the deal too you know games are expensive these days 
I'm old enough that I remember my dad bringing home Pong when I was four. When I started buying games, you know, twenty nine ninety nine maybe. $70 for a game? It's outrageous. Anyway. All right. That is got to do it for this edition of Bearing Arms Scam and Company. Thank you so much for being a part of today's program. Looking forward to being back with you again very soon. In fact, tomorrow. <laughs> Let's do it again tomorrow. Uh, also, don't forget, we've got our VIP Gold Chat coming up tomorrow, 1.30 Eastern. Now, Ed Morrissey from Hot Air is uh, out for the week, so we'll have a special guest hanging out with me for an hour. Hopefully, you will get a chance to hang out, too. If you're not yet a VIP or VIP Gold member, just go to BarryAndArms.com slash subscribe. Use the promo code GUNRIGHTS, and you can get a significant savings on your VIP membership. Not only will you get to do cool things like take part in these VIP Gold live chats, but you'll get exclusive content from Barry and Arms, and if you're a VIP Gold member from all of the other Town Hall Media family and websites, too, content you won't find anywhere else, because your support matters, and it really does make a difference, so it's our way of saying thanks for your support because we really do mean it. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your 2A Tuesday. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, be well, be safe, and be free.